expensive wire uh, and then a spool that cost a hundred and some odd dollars. But um, I actually use it also for hanging plates. That's where it started. Anyway, it's, it's this 270 pound test cable and I removed, it might be seven strand or eight strand, and I'm removing three. And then the, the remainder to keep the, the twist in place. Um, you know, it's a, it's a place on the East Coast that, you know, they're, they're after marlin and whatever else they're after. And, and I'm just after little black widgets and So I'm going to go ahead and finish this as a teapot. Oh, just like the other one. Um, I did skip a step. So I'm I'm just trimming the underside of the lid. Uh, I'm going to, for some reason, just in the last two weeks, I've totally changed the whys of why I do something on the underside of the lid. And uh, I don't know why I did it, except that it just became a little more interesting, and I have all sorts of, I'll say, theories as to why. This is better. I'm leaving that ring of clay. I would normally have taken that clay away, but I'm leaving that ring of clay just because the lid is actually more stable as in the pot by having that weight. Is the count. And so that's the only reason why I turned it up. Um, these things sometimes here in your mind would be just monumental changes. <laughs> you even have sleepless nights and some whatever over, over the whys of doing something just slightly different and nobody notices it anyway. And uh, you know, it's all for you. And um, The clay I'm using is a clay body I've used for, I don't know how many years, something I've developed over most of my career. Uh, so, you know, I prefer it for reasons that, that may or may not make sense to somebody else. Uh, it's formulated for, for ovenware and, and uh, thermal reasons. and. It has its own shortcomings, but it's it's you know what I what I do. So um, I'm just elevating this so that I can um, hand trim this easier. You obviously can't center this and go at it with a trimming tool. Many years ago, 
I'll present this as having made the mistake of putting my pots up on feet, like the oval dish that is on the table, like the teapot is. Um, and I did it on one pot because this pot was going to end up in the show, and I thought, well, it was a casserole dish, and I thought, well, it would be kind of elegant to put it up on feet. And over time, then all of my pots ended up elevated on feet. And I have on a couple of occasions uh, made real strong efforts to to uh, get them back down off of their feet <laughs> and have for the most part failed. So when I made this particular series of teapots quite recently, I, everything that I did in thinking about them had to do with uh, them not being up on feet. And I put the teapots together, the first group that I, I made, and took a look at them, and I went, oh, they'd be an awful lot nicer if they were <laughs> up on feet. So, uh, this ring that I, that I have here was simply thrown out of a pound and something amount of clay, pulled out, and, and the ring was created, and uh, I always think about about it in terms of me making molding. I'm making you know, a quarter round or something for my for my pots, and um, you know, crown molding or, or anything. Anyway, that's what um, what it ends up being, and so. I like to catch it when they're still relatively flexible. And that's something else. This is a fairly complicated form in all respects. A teapot, even if a teapot is, is a, a fairly traditional round form, the joining of parts, uh, you have all of these stresses and things coming together, uh, trying to fit pieces together. And, and anyway, um, all of it's done much easier if uh, you do it as wet as you possibly can. Um, when I first started joining pieces together, they were pretty firm. I'll say, in some cases, on the dry side of, of leather hard. And you struggle with it. And as soon as you start freeing yourself up and handling clay, at the wettest state you are comfortable handling it. You start to find that the pieces that you make, this is all, all about teetering too, um, the pieces that you make I think are, are fresher, more fluid, um, a little more interesting, a little more lively for having been put together on the damp side. that were supposed to be off of feet or up on feet. Bottle form is the only form that I managed to keep from elevating. You were talking earlier about making your clay um, worthy. Yeah.
with a you know wall with like a, wall with a diffuser. And I said, ah, that's probably not going to work. Wally was the only one that you know was willing to seemed to be willing to work out the flameware issues, and um, you know it had its setbacks too. He, he started getting them back in about eight to ten years. They like they had a finite life span, and people were like, uh, "It broke. I want a new one." Well, I had I had, one, I had one and didn't understand that you couldn't leave it soaking in the sink. And we put it back on the burner, and the thing was just shrapneled all over the place. I mean, it still held together, but you know, for a period of time, you were kind of ducking and doing whatever to try to get to the stove. Uh, I bought a bag of flameware clay from ART Studio in Chicago, and did a frying pan out of it. It worked for a little while. Now I just use a butter dish. Everything stuck to it like. Well, you, you know, a good a, a good stoneware that has an onion piece should should last for, forever, basically, and and uh, you, you want that quality. We've got 